I did a hardcore nuzlocke of Pokemon Shield using only Easter themed Pokemon. At first I only considered the four rabbit lines, but to make things more interesting, I expanded beyond that, as you'll see later. These extra encounters are gonna be important because if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead, and I can only catch the first Easter themed Pokemon I find on each route. Even with the extra encounters, the pool of Easter themed Pokemon is still very narrow. If I wanna make it all the way to Leon, I'm gonna have to play very carefully. To start the run, I name myself Bounce. Easter bunnies bounce around, so it just made sense. Score Bunny is my starter. We're gonna call this little guy Hair. His dream, just like any other Easter bunny, is to have a big Easter picnic with a bunch of friends and family. Unfortunately, at the beginning of our run, there's only the two of us. So by the end of this journey, we're hoping to build a big group of friends and have the best Easter picnic that Galar has ever seen. Hair joins the party and Hop goes, wait, Hop? Oh, that's so much better than Bounce. Of course the Easter bunnies hop around. Not only that, but Hop has an Easter sheep on his team? I don't care what anyone says, a sheep is not an Easter animal. We face off in our first match of many, and Hare quickly proves that he's the better Easter Pokemon. Bounce 1, Hop 0. After a quick detour, saving a sheep, I get my next two encounters of the run. Peep 1 and Peep 2. Peeps like to stick together in groups of five, so our Peep squad will soon grow larger and mightier. But for now, Peep 2 just handily takes care of Hop's team with repeated echo voices. Even with a minus special attack nature, Peep 2 put in work. I head to Motostoke, take down a couple Team Yell Grunts, and sign up for the gym challenge. Wow, a whole opening ceremony. And I'm a part of it. It feels so surreal and amazing to be- It's over. After a third fight with Hop that plays out the exact same, we can finally begin our own little easter egg hunt in the wild area. Only one Pokemon from each route means every encounter must be meticulously chosen to get every possible easter Pokemon. First, I get Bunny the Bunnelby from Westlake Axwell. Next is Peep 3 the Wingull from South Lake Miloke. Miloke? Miloch? Then Peep 4 the P-Dove from Watchtower Ruins. I don't know what it is, but when I look into his eyes, I feel like everything's gonna be okay. Finally, there's Gummy Bear the Stuffle from Dappled Grove. He is a minus defense nature and klutz instead of fluffy, but I can't let anything bad happen to Peep 4, so Gummy Bear replaces him on the team for now. After putting a bookmark in the wild area, I head on through Route 3 where we can get our 8th encounter, Tootsie Roll the Trubbish. Fun fact about Trubbish, aside from it taking 20 minutes to get this one to spawn, there was an official piece of artwork posted by Pokemon with all of the cat Pokemon at the time, and Trubbish was in the picture. Trubbish is a cat, and it's confirmed. On the way to Galar Mine 1, Hair starts going through a phase, and I prepare for the first fight against Bead. Now's a good time to mention that none of the peeps on the peep squad can evolve. If they did, they'd lose their peepness. With that in mind, Bead's 105 base special attack Solosis will be an issue. I want to set up a couple home claws and let it rip with Power Trip from Peep 1, but seeing the damage we do to Wild Woobat, I get a little worried. We don't have a lot of options with the level cap being 20 though, and I don't want to overlevel any of my flying types before the first gym fight. So, at level 17, I decide it's time. Peep 1 leads the match and sets up his first Hone Claws. Bead uses Confusion, which does over half, but a Held Orenberry gets us back to about 75%. We could get High Rolled or even Confused the next turn, but Bead's Pokemon are bulky, so if we want to win, not to mention Deathless, Peep 1 has to set up another Hone Claws. And he lives with 7 HP! From here, another Peep gets another sweep on our rival Bead. With Bead behind us, I head to Route 4 and get our ninth Pokemon, Pastry. You guys ever get, like, cornbread in your Easter basket? Yeah, that pastry. It's finally time for the first gym fight. And with our peep squad, Tootsie Roll, and Easter hair, nothing can stop us. Tootsie Roll leads the fight and sets up two layers of toxic spikes. Wanting to preserve Tootsie for later, Peep 3 comes in. On a rapid spin. Oops, the toxic spikes might be gone, but Peep 3 still does some damage before living on one from a crit magical leaf. Peep 4 tags in to save the day and takes down Gossiflor. Eldegoss Dynamaxes, but Peep 4 can at least take one hit from it. No! Peep 4! How could you? Oh, oh, you're gonna regret that, Milo. Peep 2 enters the field and stalls out the Dynamax. Hair follows and cleans up the fight with a flame charge. To be honest, a crit on Peep 4, anyone would have died for that move. It just goes to show that things will not be easy for our Easter team. If anything, we need reinforcements. There's quite a few Pokemon to get now, but these are going to be most of the remaining encounters for the run. So bear with me here. We get Fruit Snack the Boon Suite from the wild area, head on to the Isle of Armor for a Rabbit the Baneri, we get real lucky with an Execute Raid spawning in, 
You'll never guess what I call him. Rabbit evolves? Wow, the friend ball really works. Then I catch Easter Basket the Chansey, Lagomorph the Meryl, Jumbo Peep the Cramorant, Milk Chocolate the Miltank, and finally, me on Easter. I don't know how, but Basket evolved by friendship while I was hunting me on Easter. Uh, don't get me wrong, it took a long time, and I even got the 2% Azuril to spawn multiple times before me on Easter, but wow. Not complaining though. While I was farming XP candies, I got shot by a blast from the past. Everywhere I go, I see his face. Hopefully I can make things right in the end. It's time to head back to Galar, and you know what that means. Another epic tale of Bounce versus Hop. His team is still mostly the same, bleeding with Easter Sheep and shouting something about green power. Oh, wait, maybe it's like green thumb? Easter's in the springtime and he wants to make the world a better pl- ah, ah, darn you Hop! Always one step ahead. The newly evolved Bunny, Egg, and Rabbit handle the battle pretty well, with hair coming in then to clean up. I may have won the battle of truth, but the battle of ideals goes to Hop this time. Immediately after, I catch Candy Apple the Applin and head to Holbury to fight Nessa. This fight shouldn't be anything special. I could pretty much just sweep with Giga Drain, so I'm just gonna rely on her. And I don't think I'm wrong for this. After all, Egg cleanly one-shots the Golding. The only problem is that Ericuda flinches Egg with Bite. And then does it again. And then again. Then we one-shot Ericuda. Egg does not outspeed and does not live a max darkness anymore though. And Gummy Bear doesn't take their hits well either. The lack of Fluffy really hurts. In hindsight, I should have also brought Lagomorph, who would have resisted Dreadnought's water and dark moves. But it's fine. Me on Easter, who looks very dapper by the way, eats a Max Geyser. She then takes a second one and tries to paralyze them with Lick, but no luck. Fruit Sack doesn't take a Razor Shell as well as I was hoping, but they don't get the defense drop, so she stays in, lives on three, and does decent damage with the Razor Leaf. Basket switches in to set up Charm. We're holding an Absorb Bulb, so... Oh, oh, the, the Absorb Bulb doesn't absorb anything, okay? Learn something new every day. With Charm set, we can now switch into Egg and Giga Drain for victory. See, see? We got what we got there. Egg pretty much swept. Just like with Hop, Bead's second fight is mostly the same. This time, it's Rabbit who uses Brutal Swing to just sweep. On my way back to Motostoke, Jumbo Peep, and I fight some more Team Yell Grunts. Hop wants to help me, but we can all see that Jumbo Peep is putting in all the work. It's time to fight Kabu, and his gym is usually a big spike in difficulty for Nuzlocks. Ninetales, Arcanine, and G-Max sent a Scorch already? Luckily for me, Team Easter can handle these guys pretty well. Basket sets up some Stealth Rocks that we got from a TR. Stalling with Life Dew, Tri Attack eventually gets the first KO. Arcanine is next, so I send in Lagomorph. They can't do anything to him as he has Thick Fat instead of Huge Power. Woo. But before we use our first Waterfall, Lagomorph gets burned by their second Flame Wheel. Regardless, Lagomorph still comes out on top. Senna Scorch is last, and Stealth Rocks puts in work. Then Peep 3 eats a Max Flutterfly on two. <laughs> We're gonna hang in there, little guy. Bunny is next and eats a resisted G Max Seneferno. And this is where I miscalculated. I forgot that Seneferno traps you in with Fire Spin. Uh, Bunny resists it, like I said, but unfortunately, he doesn't have huge power either. And Cheek Pouch isn't doing enough to stave off the damage. Bunny does one last bit of damage before Max Flutterby, and Fire Spin does him in. Jumbo Peep enters the field and was always gonna be the hero of this fight. He resists all of Senescorch's moves, but I wasn't sure if you'd live enough of the max moves. Liquidation is more than enough to get the kill. Hey, 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 you stay cute. I'm not gonna lie, it sucks that one of our four Easter Bunnies ended up dying like that, but we gotta push on. With the early game finished, somewhat haphazardly, I head back to the Isle of Armor and craft an ability capsule. All you need is three rare candies and any other fourth item. With Peep 4 and Bunny going down, I realized I can't play around anymore, and I need to start using every tool at my disposal to win this challenge. The first ability capsule goes to the newly evolved Gummy Bear, so that she can be fluffy. From here we head back to the wild area and get three of our five remaining Pokemon. The first one is the dog that ate the chocolate. Yes, the hey, hey, dr drop it, drop it! Next is the second egg based Pokemon, Kinder Egg. That I can fully evolve because the DLC is very generous. Sadly Kinder Egg is starting with Hustle. What's with the abilities this run? <laughs> Last but not least is Mime Junior. Can you guess what Easter theme she covers? Alright, I'll give you till she evolves to figure it out. That's right, she's the guy in the bunny suit. 
Not a lot happens on Route 6, so I head to Stowan side for the fourth badge. Hop blocks my path, so we begin our fifth battle and... What? What? Is he mimicking Jumbo Peep? Because he saw how good he did against Team Yell earlier? Huh, I must be really showing him up in the Easter department. Nice. The fight is made pretty easy thanks to the new team members and Jumbo Peep. Alistair's a little tricky. Most of his Pokemon are easy to deal with, but that G-Max Gengar at the end, either trapping you in with G-Max Terror or raising its special attack with Max Ooze. Worst case scenario, the dog that ate the chocolate could come in and kill a strong draw crunch, but that's only if someone dies to give a safe switch in, which is not ideal. When the Gengar does come out, I send in Jumbo Peep. The Gengar never goes for G-Max Terror since I had a normal type out, and we take the Max Darkness pretty well. They're for sure going for G-Max Terror now, so I send Meon Easter, who's immune. She eats a Max Darkness and retaliates with a Shadow Ball that gets a special defense drop. From here, Venishock doesn't do nearly enough, and a second Shadow Ball cleanly takes the victory. Go team! After that win, Meon Easter is kind of in the zone now, so she goes on a killing spree with Beads team. Fun little family afternoon. With almost no break, it's finally time for the fifth badge from Opal. While prepping, I get another ability capsule, and Lagomorph finally gets her huge power. <sighs> Can I mention real quick how the first time I walked into this city, I was actually blown away by how pretty it was, but then immediately let down by it just being a hallway. A lot of this game is just hallways. Balonlea, Spike Mouth, Route 9... The wild area? <laughs> At least the DLC is fun to explore. My plan for Opal was to mostly wreck havoc with Tootsie Roll. This was her time to shine, but with all the required gym trainers, she overleveled. This was hard to avoid, but for now, she just goes in the back pocket. Sorry, Tootsie Roll. Luckily, with the help of Protect and Leftovers, Bunny Suit Guy can easily get the first kill with a few side beams. Hare, who recently started therapy, can one shot Mawile with Power Ball. Oh, and I see Opal celebrates a little Easter herself, so I switched to Basket. She could tank pretty much anything from Togekiss, but she doesn't need to. The first try attack gets a freeze, let's go, and Basket gets kill number three. It doesn't end there because Basket just outdamages the Alcremie by a mile to get us the win. Yeesh, I can't believe I almost let Basket go down to Nessa's Dreadnought earlier. That would have been a huge throw. Your pink is still lacking? Has she seen me? I'm all the way ready for Easter Sunday. I won, I won with Basket. I have a whole team of pink Pokemon waiting in the box. Oh, now Bead is pink enough for you? He's barely even wearing any pink. That's more of a fuchsia. Oh well, I, I have better things to do. Like, uh, Battle Hop for the sixth time. He may not be copying Jumbo Peep anymore, but now he's got his own dog that ate the chocolate. Ugh. Me and my pink team can take care of him and his green power well enough. On my way to gym number six, a cop stops me and attacks me with his two dogs. I don't know what it is lately. Everyone's so disrespectful. Maybe the holidays make people like this. I don't know. Again, with little break, the next gym badge is underway. Melanie leads with Frostmoth, and I lead with all reliable hair to get a clean one shot. Galarian Darmanitan is next and goes down just as easily. Third is Ice Q, and I know how finicky physical attacks are with these guys, so Meon Easter switches in to take it out with flamethrowers. G-Max Lapras can easily cause some issues, but luckily we have the newly evolved guy in the bunny suit to eat a Max Geyser. And then a second one thanks to Light Screen. Light Screen comboing with Protect means we survived a third Max Geyser, and G-Max ends. Milk Chocolate is now free to come in and out damage the Lapras with Body Press. Alright, I feel a little better now. Hop <laughs> Alright, all these battles are making them feel a little desperate. And I'll admit, being true to your Easter sheep warrants a little respect, but bounce will always prevail. And don't you forget it. The dark type gym is up already, and wow. It took a while to get the gym challenge going, but now it's just one match after another, huh? Well, he uses dark types, obviously, so I decided to train up my Pokemon, specifically Pastry, who's gotten a little left behind. Getting her and everyone else to the level cap is a bit of a grind, but we eventually make it. With this team, the Dark Gym should be the easiest in the game. If it weren't for the fact that they all overleveled thanks to the, all the Team Yell Grunts. This would have been avoidable if I knew I could switch out Pokemon at any time in the gym, unlike any others, but that's that's okay. This new team should be good too. Alright, well let's see what all the hubbub over Pierre's is about.
I know I don't really have anything new to add to the conversation, but like really, what were they thinking? We start with Jumbo Peep versus Scrafty. Scrafty is strong, so even with Stockpile, Jumbo Peep switches out only after one drill peck. Bulk Chocolate comes in, and since Scrafty is bulky, I'm not sure if Body Press gets the kill. We go for the 50% accurate play rough, and Scrafty down. Opsta Goon comes out right away, so I switch to me on Easter. As long as I stick to flamethrowers, I don't have to worry about obstruct or counter, and get Opsta Goon pretty low. Either Malamar or Skunk Take is next. Pro tip, Skunk Take is always last apparently. So I decide it's best for Milk Chocolate to get the kill, and be ready for whatever comes out next. Obviously it's Malamar, and even with Milk Drink, they're doing a little too much damage to us. Hair is reliable, so I safely switch him in and get the kill with a U-turn. Milk Chocolate comes back to the Skunk Tank. Milk Drink out heals any damage they do, so high horsepower gets a clean 2-hit KO, and we claim badge number 7. Raihan and his gym about double battles is next. It'll be tough getting through Deathless, which is why I'm entering Candy Apple into the fray. This little guy will be incredibly important going forward. So, <laughs> once again, Astri and Lagomorph overlevel in the battles leading up to the gym leader. There wasn't really anything I could have done to prevent this. There's like no time between this gym and the last gym, and I couldn't tag them out in between fights, I think. It also doesn't help that I had to get the XP charm to use the Cramomatic, but I'm just gonna give myself a freebie for this one. I don't think it really makes the battle any different this time anyway, but it sucks that I've got to deal with it, you know? Fighting for the Dragon Badge, it's Candy Apple and Pastry versus Gigalith and Flygon. Sandstorm is set, buffing their special defenses, but Draining Kiss on Flygon and Apple Acid on Gigalith still do about 75%. Breaking Swipe hurts Candy Apple, and the Stealth Rocks will be a little annoying. Next turn, Candy Apple protects the second Breaking Swipe, and Pastry comfortably gets the kill with a second Draining Kiss. Body Press goes into Candy Apple, but again, protect BB! If you're ever doing a double battle, Protect really is a top tier move. Sanaconda enters the field, but Dazzling Gleam and Apple Acid combo takes both of them down, and Raihan is down to his last Pokemon. The problem is that his last Pokemon is going to be the size of a building, and has great type coverage into most of my Pokemon. I play defensively and swap Pastry for Egg, while Candy uses Protect. The G-Max Duraludon uses Max Steel Spike into Egg, who... takes it. Now I switch both Pokemon out, for Pastry and Gummy Bear respectively. I choose correctly because Pastry eats G-Max Depletion for free. Fruit Snack switches into the next Steel Spike, and Gummy Bear lowers the speed with Low Sweep. And now, Duraludon isn't G-Max anymore, but the plus 2 defense body press is still very scary. I switch Gummy Bear into Lagomorph, while Fruit Snack sets up Reflect. Rehan reads me and gets a crit on Fruit Snack. You scoundrel, you. From there, Low Sweep and Play Rough do decent damage, but Duraludon goes for body press on Fruit Snack, and it KOs her through a Reflect! No, I don't know if the crit from before mattered, but rest in peace, Fruit Snack. You were so close to the picnic. Gummy Bear comes in, and a second low sweep play rough combo takes out the Duraludon. With that, the 8th badge is ours, but it wasn't free. Before I head to Winden, it's time to head back to the Isle of Armor one last time for my second to last encounter. Combi! Just gonna make sure it's a girl. Okay, yeah. Some might say a bee is as much of an easter animal as the fraud sheep, but hear me out? Have you new heard of, uh, pastel candles? Catholics, back me up here. The whole holiday would be nothing without the bees wax, come on! Anyways, we finally made it to Winden. Hopefully the team and I can make it through the tournament and prove the name of Bounce. If we're any bit lucky, we could finish in time and have a nice easter meal with everyone. But first, we have to get through the semifinals. In the spirit of Nuzlocke's and past Elite Fours, I'm going to be treating this kind of like an Elite Two. The team I bring to Fight One will be the exact same team I bring for Fight Two, even though I could switch them in between matches if I wanted. This shouldn't be an issue anyways, because our first fight is only Marnie. I haven't brought up her fights until now for a few reasons. They were pretty simple, Hop already has like 20, and I couldn't find a reason to dislike her, unlike Hop and Bead. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Oh, she's goth. She probably hates Easter and Easter aesthetic. All right, Marnie, now that's too far. She leads with a light part that doesn't stand any chances against me on Easter. Scrafty is next, but just as easily gets taken out by Kinder Egg. Yeah, what else, Marnie? Oh, Toxic Rogue? Well, Pastel Candle could just debut and land a couple air slashes. More Peko? More like more Dado? See you never. Grimmsnarl is last and is for sure going to use Max Starfall. 
but Hare can take the first hit. Gummy Bear switches and eats a max snooze, and then Hare once again takes another max starfall. From there, Milk Chocolate can switch between attacking and drinking her own milk until Grimmsnarl goes down. Once again, our immaculate Easter vibes prevail. I hope you learned this lesson, Marnie. And now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Bounce versus Hop, round 100. I could probably end the run after this fight, and that's all we'd need, but I know this isn't the end of my journey. There's plenty of other jumping verbiage out there. Hop is only the first in a hop, skip, and a jump. I've got to prove Bounce is better once and for all. Hop leads with the Easter Sheep, and I lead with the Easter Hare. They do some heavy damage and even paralyze us with a couple body slams. However, the Easter Hare was always going to come out on top. Snorlax is next, so I tag in Pastoral Candle. He's another heavy hitter, but with the leftovers and defend order, Pastoral Candle proves her spot on the team yet again, and eventually gets the kill with attack order. Pink Urchin comes in to pinch our chin, but before we let her do that, Book Chocolate swaps in. She gets paralyzed by Thunderbolt right away, but once again uses the power of her own milk to overcome anything. Until Pink Urchin sets up a fifth curse. We could take a hit, but the para really puts things up in the air. So, Meon Easter takes the field. Poison Jab hurts a lot, but Shadow Ball can clean up without any worries. Corviknight decides to swagger, but Meon Easter's got her own tempo, and just takes the attack boost for free. A couple flamethrowers does the job. Hop sends out his green power Rillaboom last. Paschal Candle eats a max overgrowth, Gummy Bear eats a max strike, and Paschal Candle comes in again to eat a max quake. From here, she could stay in and two-shot the Rillaboom with Air Slash. I would have liked to end it with hair, like we always have, but he was a little too low for that. Well, I guess that's that. I've proven my namesake without any doubt. The bounce versus hop debacle that everyone loved is over. But I can't help but feel like something's still missing. I have defeated hop for the hundredth time, but the truth is this fight was settled a long time ago. Do I even need to keep doing all this to make it to the Easter picnic? Why am I still fighting? I'll just think about it later. That's a problem for future me. For now, I get to do a super exciting side quest and face off against uh, Team Macro Cosmos. Let's go! And yes, it is super exciting. There's even this crazy climax where I get to fight Oleana. You, you know her? The one with the untucked shirt. It, okay, it's crazy, all right? Hair one-shots the Frostlass. Candy Apple bodies the Milotic. Chocolate Milk one-shots the Lazzle, and Hare gets a one-shot on Serena! Then at the end, Gummy Bear takes out the G-Max Garboder. Isn't that crazy? From here, we learn that Chairman Rose wants to bring about the darkest day, so that we can end it. And everyone's giving him a hard time for some reason? Wow, God forbid men have hobbies. With that, it's time to prepare for the real Elite Four. And I'm not gonna lie, with the same rules I had for the Elite Two, this is gonna be hard. A team of 6 Easter themed Pokemon to deal with 4 teams and 4 Gigantamax Pokemon? I put a lot of time into planning, and go get my last encounter of the run. Gumi. This hunt takes a long time. Gumi only spawns in the Lake of Outrage at a random encounter when it's raining. And even then it's only a 2% chance. You know what else is a 2% chance? Barbarical. Cool, huh? This hunt is also difficult because most of the overworld spawns are large apex predators that see me as dinner so I have to dodge those too. I could easily get Gumi from the Isle of Armor, but the only area he spawns in is the same area as Jumbo Peep, and I'd have to sacrifice his encounter? And yeah, right, like I'd do that. Finally, after what feels like hours, we finally encounter another Barbarical. Okay, this must be some sick joke. Oh, come on! Finally, after a long, long time, we find Gumi and name her Gummy. She's different from the other Gummies, trust me. She'll be immensely important for the rest of the run. The bad news here is that she's level 52 when we encounter her. So with the level cap of 53, she can only evolve once before the Elite Four. I've got an Eevee Light that she can hold, but that's a duct tape solution while we need Jesus. It's time for the Elite Four. And if you didn't notice by now, the team I'm bringing is Hair, Candy Apple, Pastel Candle, Gummy, Kinder Egg, and the dog that ate the chocolate. He and Kinder Egg haven't gotten much time to shine until now, but they're gonna shine very bright in the Winden Tournament. They have to, because we're gonna need all six of these guys to make it out on the other side. Let's see if we got what it takes.
The first match is against the uh oh what? Who could that be? It's the pink man himself. He thought he could upstage us and he kinda does because I'm stuck wearing this lame uniform. No matter. After resetting Intimidate, Harry could one-shot his Mawile, Gardevoir, and Rapidash with the help of Choice Band. G-Max Hatterene is last, and I just have to pivot my Pokemon accordingly. Nothing I haven't done a million times by now. First, it's Candy Apple on Max Mindstorm. Then, Paschal Candle switches in to eat a Max Flutter by- Huh? Max Flare? Wow, well, th may the power of pink compel me, I guess. Just got completely outplayed. Uh, Gummy can eat a Max Mindstorm thanks to Eevee Light, and Kinder Egg takes the win with back-to-back -back Air Slash flinches. I gave her an Ability Capsule earlier, so Serene Grace made that possible. But losing one of my six Pokemon this early on is not good. And Paschal Candle was putting in so much work too, and she was gonna put in so much more. The Slay Queen has been slayed. Remember how I said I'd still need all six of my Pokemon to get out of this safely? Yeah, the battles are gonna get even rougher from here on. Nessa is next, and this time it's a serious battle. I'm guessing she means after Kinder Egg one-shots the Glissapod? Or after the dog that ate the chocolate bites through Sea King, Pelipper, and Barrascuta. He was only able to pull that off damageless thanks to the Choice Scarf he's been holding. No idea where he finds these things. Last of course is Dreadnought, and this time Nessa fed her some Max Soup. But with the help of Assault Vest and boosted Leftovers Recovery thanks to Ripen, Kitty Apple could just wall the Dreadnought until G-Max runs out, and one-shots her with Apple Acid. I had no idea Ripen worked with Leftovers, but... I'm not gonna lift a gifted apple pie in the mouth or whatever. Well, that was emotionally exhausting. I should go for some refreshments after that exhilarate. What? <laughs> what do you mean only authorized people? I'm <laughs> I'm competing in the semifinals of a sport that the whole country is watching. If, if that vending machine that I still have to put money into use is not for me, then who, then who is it, who is it for? Alistair's fight is a little trickier than before, giving our Lesser numbers. However, Candy Apple vs. Dustnor isn't that bad, as Dustnor's okay at best attack and low base power moves are a pretty pitiful combination. For Chandelure, I originally planned to switch to Hair, but without the wiggle room of Paschal Candle, I decided to keep Candy Apple on the field. I was hoping Protect Leftovers would let him live long enough to get the kill, and I'm right! Good going, Candy. Pultigas and Cursalud come out and just go down to a couple Air Slash flinches from Kinder Egg. Gengar, the Pokemon that makes this trick, he is finally here. Just like before, I've got to be careful about getting trapped with G-Max Terror or letting them get a special attack boost with Max Ooze. Kinder Egg is out right now, so I know they're going for Max Ooze first. Regardless, I decide to stay in. Without any boosts, Kinder Egg could give at least the first attack for sure. The second turn is where we have to start pulling out all the stops. The dog that ate the chocolate can come in later to get the kill, but that means someone has to die so he could get a free switch in. Kinder Egg has Protect, which cuts the damage of Max moves down to a quarter, but that won't be enough protection now. Gummy's gonna have to switch in and handily eat some hits. She does fine, but we don't want her trapped and she does not outdamage the Gengar. This means, with a heavy heart, I send in Candy Apple to take the hit from the last turn of G-Max. He did everything he was supposed to and more in this gauntlet, but the butterfly effect of losing Pastral Candle unfortunately led to his demise. Even with all of his hard work, it did have to be Candy Apple here. If I want to get past Alistair and Raihan and the rest of the game, the other four here are going to be way more important to keep. But thanks to a sacrifice, Dog That Ate the Chocolate could come in and one-shot Gengar with Crunch, winning us Battle 3 in the Champion Cup. Before I even got two deaths in these last few battles, I was not looking forward to the Raihan fight. All of his Pokemon have little quirks to get their own strategy going, which can be scary in their own right, but G-Max Duraludon is still the big bad. This time, I'm leading with Gummy against Raihan's Torkoal. The Eevee Light lets her tank all of Torkoal's moves, but they don't even get a chance to use any. Torkoal's last move was Yawn, so Kinder Egg switches in to the Turtonator. Surprisingly, Dazzling Gleam is a quick two-shot. Gudra's out, and I'm a little scared of Thunder, but I'm pretty sure they just always set up Rain Dance first. Dazzling Gleam does over half, so we just outspeed for a third kill. Flygon just sets up Sandstorm, so we just had to mix it up this time and kill with one Dazzling Gleam. Duraludon's first move is Max Rockfall, but our Protect did a good job mitigating it. Then I pivot into Gummy, who eats another Rockfall really well, and back into Kinder Egg on an immune G-Max depletion. My only consistent play in getting rid of Duraludon is one-shotting with Aura Sphere. Kinder Egg's a fairy type, so I'd like to switch out, but my team's a little frail and I don't want to lose any momentum. Kinder Egg just has to live one Iron Head. 
And she does it! Orosphere fires off and takes out the Duraludon, making us the victors of the Champion Cup. I should point out that Raihan's Pokemon are only up to level 55, while mine are up to level 59. Unfortunately, with the nature of the Gauntlet and the XP charm they force on you if you want to use the Cramomatic, this was kind of unavoidable. I could have gone with my Pokemon at only level 49 or something at the beginning, but I think treating this part of the game as a gauntlet balances it out. It took me a long time to plan for this team, and things still went wrong here and there. If you have any other ideas on how to handle this in the future, let me know in the comments. Paying me a visit before my crazy climactic final battle is Hop and his green power. He wants me to kill his brother, so kill him I shall. Oh man, it's finally here. Bounce versus Leon. But I still can't shake this feeling that I'm missing something. No, no, that's not it. When Gummy finally evolves, I go to fight Rose in an area that has no right to look this cool. <laughs> Me on Easter and Hare handle most of his Pokemon pretty easily. Then for his final metallic mammal, Egg stalls the G-Max form and Milk Chocolate gets the win thanks to Body Press. As satisfying and fulfilling as that fight was, something was still wrong. I made it this far, but I've already defeated Hop. My main goal in this region was accomplished, and in the process of continuing my adventure, two of my Easter buddies died, never making it to the final supper. Leon's probably fine dealing with the darkest day on his own. I need to take a break and think about why I'm here. My really deep and really cool self-pondering took me back to the wild area, where the team and I traveled for three days and three nights, looking for answers. On the third day, a wild beware attacks me, and risen from the dead, coming to save me, is Peep 4? What? Peep 4, you're back? Oh, what's that? This is kind of a one-time thing? You were sent to hell? It's been three days and Leon needs me? I, I guess, but he's the champion and... Yeah, 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 you're right. I won't find answers for myself walking in low poly circles all day. I need to finish what I started. Hey Leon, how's it go? Oh no. Wait, 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 wait. Peep 4 leads the fight against Eternatus and scouts with Detect. It's going for Flamethrower, and I know I'll need Peep 4 for later, so Basket switches in. Thanks to Peep 4 snapping us back into it, Basket can cleanly get the kill on Eternatus with a few try attacks. That's okay, we still have Peep 4. With a tailwind, Peep 4 leads the brutal onslaught on the G-Max Eternatus. In the end, Eternatus can do nothing but watch as... Th that's okay, that's okay, we'll just roost you up and you'll be as good as new and... No! How could this happen? With our cutest little Peep gone to hell for a second time this week, me on Easter takes a vengeful stand and lends a Zen headbutt that kills the Eternatus once and for all. He was only back for a short time, but I'll never forget Peep 4's lesson. I head back to Winden for the championship match against Leon, and build the perfect team. Wait, wait a minute. Leon? Hop's older brother, Leon? Leon? Leap on? Leap? He was there all along! Bounce vs. Hop was just a warm-up for Bounce vs. Leap! It all makes sense now! In order to become the definitive Easter guy, I've gotta take down Leap. Thank you, Peep4. Without you, I never would have come to this realization. The stage is set, and I lead with none other than Hair against Leap's Aegislash. It's a dice roll, but one Pyro Ball is enough to take it down, even in defense form. Haxorus is next, so I counter with Kinder Egg, who eats a free Earthquake. From there, Gummy Bear could switch in to a weaker Iron Tail. That misses. Gummy Bear trades an Earthquake for a Hammer Arm, and thanks to Fluffy, we're healthy enough to take another and get the kill with strength. Mr. Rhyme is up and reveals to me that Hop wasn't the only one trying to copy me, trying to make the best Easter team. Mimicry is the highest form of flattery, leap on. Basket sets up South Rocks and gets the kill on Mr. Rhyme after many, many turns. With Keter Dance and Psychic, Mr. Rhyme would have been a big problem, but Basket had everything under control. Leap's next Pokemon is Dragapult, which means Gummy Bear and her Assault Vest 
once worn by Candy Apple, can come out. The best move for Gummy is Dragon Breath, so we safely get the one shot with Dragon Pulse. Atta girl! Inteleon, the little Sobble from the beginning of the game, is here to get revenge for not being chosen as the definitive Easter Pokemon. He'll have to wait till next year, however, cause Gummy Bear just gets a second kill with a couple Thunderbolts. Finally, Leapon's Charizard is here. His health is cut in half thanks to the Stealth Rocks, but it's his moves that are the scary part. Gummy stays in on a G-Max Rockfall and dishes out Draco Meteor. It does good damage, but now's the time to switch. Basket has proven time and time again that she could tank special moves, and that's all Charizard has. This time, he uses Max Airstream, so now he outspeeds everyone on my team, including the dog that ate the chocolate. Basket protects on Charizard's G-Max Wildfire, which does almost nothing as a result. Now Charizard is small again, Basket could get the kill, but that just wouldn't feel right. We have to finish this fight the only way that makes sense. Hera re-enters the battlefield on Fire Blast. Thanks to the Sandstorm Tick, he's just low enough to activate his Citrus Berry. Because of that, we're safe to take one more Fire Blast. Hare springs up into the air, and as he's coming down, the Sandstorm clears away, almost leaving a path directly to Leapon's Charizard. He avoids one last Fire Blast on the way down, and with one final blow, Hare takes down Leapon's Charizard. With Bounce. Winning us a Deathless Winden Championship match, and the run. Thank you all so much for watching. This video was really fun to make, even if the plot got a little out there toward the end. I've only made two so far, but these videos have been a blast. Especially with the positive feedback on the last one, I'd love to keep doing these. If you liked what you saw today, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to help keep the video in the algorithm. And check out my Twitch. I'm always doing something over there in Dark Souls and Pokemon, and right now you can watch me race Static Socks in Pokemon Inclement Emerald. It's a fun time. Once again, it's been a blast. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.